Hey everyone, welcome to Paradigm 360. I'm your host, Abby Vick. And today I have my friend, Beth Dana, coming to talk to you today about money mindset. And to be totally honest with you, this topic was new to me just a couple weeks ago. Even working in the financial field, um, it was not something that was really taught to me uh, even from a young age in anywhere in my financial experience working in the industry and the more that I've been learning about it the more appreciative I've been <laughs> in how to integrate this in client meetings so I thought Beth would be a great partner to bring your way as she is much more experienced than I am and we can go through some of these steps on how to get introduced to it why it's so important and then we can hear from her about her business and how she's built her business around it so thanks so much Beth for coming on oh girl thanks for having me this is beautiful thank you cool um, all right, so let's let's just dive right into it. Um, I would love to know first how you got into helping people with a money mindset to begin with. So when I got transitioned from the real estate industry into the financial industry, I just it was evident that it was a very masculine energy dominated industry. Yes, there's a lot of women in the industry, but it's still very masculine energy versus the feminine energy. So I noticed that was missing. And then going through my own personal journey and my relationship with money, I just, again, knew it felt like the feminine compassion, really heart centered approach was, was missing. And so I just kind of blended these two together. And that's really how my practice ended up developing on a more personal level, but then recognizing what the industry was really missing mm -hmm. is that heart centered approach to finances. And so the more that I began to practice it within myself, I, it just became more and more uh, evident that it, it is a need in the financial industry. I, I love how you put it that way, because I think saying heart-centered industry and finance in the same sentence people are probably already having feelings about that <laughs> right like you wouldn't really consider to put those two things together it's like when i tell people that my degree is in social work and i love being in a, in the financial industry they think that doesn't make any sense there's no connection there why would there be a connection and i my answer is always I get to help people in both ways and it's just in a different kind of mindset. But thinking about money with your heart and not with your brain, I mean, wow, that's a real big transition um, of mindset. So maybe you could talk to us about why having a different mindset around money, why is that so important to our everyday lives? Well, as you and I know, because we both target, you know, you know, the audience that most of the financial industry is not catering to, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that, typically, financial education is not in the household in most of those cases, and it's not in our school system. So where do people find it? They end up developing just habits based on just trial and error. I know that was for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it really goes deeper than that, because depending on our upbringing and how we're watching mom and or dad, how they're handling money and their work ethic and all of that stuff that gets passed down that's something that we're witnessing that's something we're watching and then it shapes a paradigm as to how then we relate to money whether it's how we have to work really hard and hustle for money which is not necessarily true um that you know it's just for the wealthy and the people who create generational wealth and that's it um, there's a lot of limiting beliefs that we end up developing within ourselves, deserving conversations, we're not worthy of it, mm. but that is not being talked about. And it's really in the healing of that, that everything else makes sense because I don't know like you, but I've sat down in front of a lot of people, shared with them financial concepts. It sounds great for a minute, then they creep back into the, the habits that they're used to because that feels comfortable and then everything else was like it didn't even exist <laughs> so mm -hmm. it goes down to getting to the root of habits behavior beliefs shifting the mindset 
Yeah, wow. I, I was listening to a podcast about something totally differently, but I think this is in alignment of what you were talking about, which is like imagine how much our society would change if our if we recognized our own value outside of what's in our bank account and how hard we work and uh, what company we work for. That might be a fancy name of a company, right? Mm -hmm. And if we had that innate value and had that shift in our mindset, and thank you for using the word paradigm, by the way, <laughs> if we had that paradigm shift in our mindset, how much our whole society would change. Um, and yeah, money's definitely a big part of that in a capitalist society where we base so much of our value system on that. There's a lot of identity wrapped into a lot of things that you were just speaking on and that then causes a lot of our consumer driven country, right? Buying a lot of stuff to fill mm -hmm. a void, material mm -hmm. stuff. And if people really got into their heart of exactly why we're all here and their purpose, their money would, they would be spending money differently. They would be earning money differently, um, much more in alignment with what's in their heart than external yeah yeah that's great um okay so let me get back to my question <laughs> i told you i did want to introduce everyone to your book that i'm very excited to get and read myself so it's called make money your partner and i'm staring at it right now what's really nice about what beth has done is she of course has it available on her website thegildedaway.com and when you go to her site, you can either buy it at Amazon or even an independent bookstore if you'd rather support an independent bookstore, which I think is really cool that you did that. And so I did want to give you an opportunity to talk about the book and what really inspired you to putting pen to paper and doing that. So the inspiration really came from my own personal journey and my relationship with money. You know, I started in my spiritual transformational journey and wanting to really heal my relationship with money. I started doing different practices, uh, meditating. Faith was a big thing for me and in recognizing that when I stepped into faith and stepped into trust, that just new things opened up for me. And a lot of that had to do with, with finances and money. And so I just started noticing all of these things that I was, I was doing and then they were working. And so I actually went to a friend of mine who's a self-published author. And she self-published numerous books through Amazon and little plug on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I went to her thinking I wanted to write my story because I thought my story could be inspiring for somebody. She's mm -hmm. like, that's a pretty big task. Are you sure you want to do that? What else do you have? And I said, well, I've been kind of working with this financial journal thing. She's like, let's do that. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. So I literally went home and the next day it was just like a download. I just created it. Mm -hmm. And with months the the guts of it was developed. I found somebody to do the exterior book cover. Um, I had somebody proofread it because I didn't want to sound all super woo woo y and I wanted it to be relatable to to everyone yeah. and then it was up on, on Amazon and within you know a couple of months so it's a it's a good testament to where when you're in alignment mm. how things just end up popping and opening up for you mm -hmm. uh, so that's how that was developed and again a lot of it is I ended up seeing just how this was needed in the financial industry I didn't know it, it was intentionally written with the purpose of supporting somebody on the spiritual level, but also on um, a logical level. So there is, you know, assignments in there to look at your finances. So it really has both masculine, feminine, heart centered and logic, um, right brain, left brain, you know, kind of feel. So it's got a good a balance. Uh, but I didn't know what it was going to end up developing. So over time, after it was published, it's just kind of started turning into stuff. It, I ended up looking at it and I'm like, this is a workshop. So I created a workshop around it and I was hosting workshops and then pandemic happened and now it's a coaching program. So now it's developed into a one-on-one -on -one coaching program with, with people so they can really just dive in deep and uncover, discover a whole new relationship with money. So it's beautiful how it's just keeps developing and unfolding. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, um, I love the way that you talk about 
you know, the left brain, right brain. And it's really this um, collaboration, companionship, partnership, whatever you want to call it, between like the spiritual and the mindset as well as the practical. And how when I'm talking to clients about their financial plan and we're planning into the future and we're thinking about what they want out of life and what the next couple of years for goals would be and even all the way down the road to retirement, if, if the client's not in line with that vision, if they're not excited about their vision, if they're not excited about their goals, they're probably not going to accomplish them because making those really practical steps, you know, can sometimes be against our nature or we like self-sabotage the things that we're actually trying to do. Right. And so I, you know, I think I just applaud you because I think what you're doing is so important, marrying these two things together that it's really, it's really challenging to have one without the other. And if you don't feel in alignment with your goals and with your future, how can we really make the steps to get your money in the right place? Um, so I think you're, I'm, again, I'm really excited to read your book and like go through that experience. But again, like I said, you can go onto the gildedaway.com and see Beth's programs and all the offerings she has. I think you have some coming up in September, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. So I do just kind of like a little taste tester. I'll do like just short little free, um, webinar events so people can join that. And then, you know, if they want to then step into one-on-one -on -one coaching then I have that available for people. So. Yeah, but it's not it's not a book. So if, if somebody's not a big reader, it's not that kind of book. Just so you're, so you're clear, mm -hmm. it's a working journal. So it's 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 gonna guide you through a 30 day journey, and you're gonna create better habits, and you're gonna set goals for yourself uh, with the intention that you're going to achieve them. So awesome. Yeah. So. Um... Let me see. I kind of skipped out on my questions, to be honest. Okay. How can we, I know your journal is really helpful, but how could you have any more tips about becoming more aware of our limiting beliefs around money? I think the first thing that I, that I always find that has ever worked for me and what I generally tell people is notice how you're feeling when money's around, like if you are in a transaction, if you're paying a bill, mm -hmm. if, your paycheck, just anything money related. How are you feeling about that? Cause getting in touch with the feeling is very important. Getting into the emotional part of money. So I would say first recognize how you feel around money. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel shame? Do you feel embarrassed? Do you feel joyful? Are you loving? Are you, do you feel connected with your money? So really feeling, how do you feel with your money so first take notice yeah and that's a great tip sorry my dog's barking in the background real life recording <laughs> um yeah i mean if anyone knows anything about money they have to know that money is emotional right it's still one of the leading causes of divorce because it's so hard to talk to i just saw a post today on facebook in a different facebook group that i'm in and she said she had been with her boyfriend for five years and was living with him and they had never talked about money before that like he had no she had no idea how much debt he was in how much money he made at his job and they had been living together for a couple of years and i thought wow i think that really speaks to some people's pain and insecurity around money and even shame and guilt right we can just list all of these kinds of emotions that that people who go through that experience must be having, um, or, you know, there's a, a friend that I know of who has to have completely separate finances from her husband, who she's been married to for 14 or 15 years, because there isn't trust there with money. So they're keeping everything separate and paying for bills. So um, I think, <clears throat> There's not a perfect way to handle money. There's lots of different ways people can practically handle their money. But when there's distrust there, when there's guilt there, when there's shame there, when you're embarrassed, I have people who come to me and they're embarrassed to show me their money because they feel like it's not right. They're embarrassed that they don't know more about their money. And all those kinds of emotional barriers can really keep you from the next stage of development and the next stage of where you want to be they can really end up holding you back and so 
you know, realizing more and more how much I need to help people go through those patterns. And, you know, fortunately for the people listening, at least you're introduced to Beth, who's been doing this for quite some time and has some great resources for you. Um, if you're someone that feels like you might be struggling and having those walls up about money. Absolutely. I mean, um, one of our leading causes of death is heart disease. Heart disease is done from stress. Stress comes from a lot of cases, it's money. People are stressed about their wor worried about their jobs, which is a source of income. They're worried about are they able to pay their bills because they've overextended them. There's a lot of uh, unfortunately negative, more negative emotions tied into uh, money and finance, yeah. and, we, and we get to shift that. That's that's what we're doing here. Is we get to shift that into an abundant mindset yeah. and abundant ways of being, so that people can live. The life that they want you know freed up and joyous and mm -hmm. doing what they love and yeah yeah and that doesn't mean you have to have a you know fancy car in the driveway and you have to have a house like that's not what it, it that's not what it's all about it's not about living this lavish lifestyle because that's certainly not for everybody but it's about being like wealthy internally as as well as you know externally and that can look like different for anybody I like that wealthy internally. I, um, if anyone's seen my website and they hear my catchphrase, my catchphrase is be wealthy, not rich. And one of the reasons I say that is exactly what we're talking about here is being wealthy really begins with a mindset. It, and a rich person is I got an increase in my paycheck and I go buy a fancier car. A wealthy person has a mindset of gratitude for their current lifestyle and they're looking towards the future on how, you know, they're going to invest in themselves and their kids and their legacy and their business and they have different, it's different priorities and it stems from a mindset. It stems from a mindset of wealth. So I, again, thank you for the plug. I really appreciate that. Oh, I'm really <laughs> All right. So once we're kind of aware of what's going on, like, oh my gosh, you're right. Every time I think about my bank account, my shoulders get tense. Or every time I think about the next bill that's coming up, my heart skips a beat or I can't stop work. Right. If once we're kind of aware of these things that are happening to us and literally physically happening to us as well, I mean, what do we do? I have this knowledge that my shoulders are tense, but I don't know what to do with that. Right. What do we do? Yeah. So acknowledge the feeling for showing up. Okay, thank you. Just don't sit in it. <laughs> don't be hanging out there for a minute. Acknowledge it's there and then be in gratitude. Grati being in gratitude is the way that is the number one way that we raise our vibration and raise our frequency is being in gratitude. Mm -hmm. So the next step is after you've acknowledged your feeling around it, be in gratitude for what you have right here and right now and say mm -hmm. thank you that it's here. So if it is that you're writing a bill, you know, write, you know, oh gosh, I'm like, oh, writing a check. Who does that? <laughs> if you're paying a bill mm -hmm. and, you know, the money's going out, you're probably maybe feeling a little tense or a little stressed about sending that out. Mm -hmm. acknowledge it and then be in gratitude the fact that you have the money because a lot of times what happens is people freak out they're like oh I'm, I'm spending this I don't know where the next is coming don't think about what's coming next be right. you right here right now about you know I'm grateful for what I have right here because I trust mm. that more is going to come trust that is a key word and thank sure. you and the thing is is we have to remember that money doesn't get to be our enemy because mm. it's again the relationship with with money if if we have somebody that we don't care for if we're fearful of they're not going to come close to us they're not going to want to be attracted to us it's not going to be that magnetic because money's energy we're energy so if we want to get into that conversation but that's really what it's what it's about so be genuinely in the feeling. Don't fake it. Don't fake it, but genuinely be in the feeling of gratitude and thank you for being here. I'm so appreciative that I'm able to and whatever it is. Yeah, that's fantastic. So yeah, gratitude and trust. Like, whew, those are two 
new concepts, new emotions, new vibrations to have around money that I'm sure a lot of people don't currently have around money, right? Gratitude and trust. I don't know anyone that would have said that first as their first initial mindset about money. Um, the thing I was going to say is, you know, we've, our brains have been trained since we were really young to subconsciously react to money because of what we've learned and what we've observed. So the shoulder tightening, the heart skipping a beat thing, those are like learned behaviors and um, learned reactions, learned emotions. And we can unlearn that if we want to, we can unlearn those things, right? And so this like gratitude and trust mindset and attitude and behavior is something that we can teach ourselves as a practice, right? That we have to step into. I'm choosing to believe this. I might sitting here right now, it could be really hard to picture I can trust money. Maybe that just sounds too bonkers for you. I can have gratitude for money. But if you become a daily practice and when you're actually actually writing the check, when you're clicking the button to send the money to, you know, APS for my, for my air conditioning, right? I live in Arizona. I am immensely grateful for my air conditioning. <laughs> and so as I push that button to send that money, I say, yeah, thank you so much. I'm grateful that I have the money to pay this. And I'm grateful that my family and I are not sweating to death every night as we go to sleep. I'm very grateful for that. I am. That's the truth. And it's, it's that practice. So I, I love that gratitude and trust around money. I'm going to write that on my mirror. And it is a practice. It's a daily practice, mm -hmm. daily practice for me. All you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah really. Awesome. Well, as we're wrapping up, I do want you to um, highlight your programs if you'd like again, towards the end and let people know how they could engage with you if they really are serious and they want to change from that shoulder tightening anxiety around money and they want to get some more help, maybe one-on-one -on -one or whatever you're offering to work through that. So, mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, as of right now, all of my programs are one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so I have a six week program and that's, it's going through the teachings of the book and we're just diving in you and me hitting the, hitting the book and we're, we're doing the work. Um, so that's, that's the six week program. Now the 10 week program, it, it's the book, but we go in a little bit deeper into your personal financial picture. And we just, we just dive deeper, you know, it's four weeks more. So you have to imagine it's, <laughs> it's going deeper. Yeah. So it, it's, those are both one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all designed to create um, better habits around money, um, get into alignment with what it is that you want. So identifying your wise limiting beliefs so that any of these goals that we set for yourself are intentionally around what's important to you and what you're currently up to. Cause it's, it's a lot of times we're not really spending in, in alignment with what it is that we're really wanting that, that happens a lot. Right. So mm -hmm. it's really about creating alignment. Um, mind, body, and spirit in the relationship with money. So there'll be good breakthroughs mm -hmm. and new habit set, new rituals. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Again, I, I love the way that Beth really in, integrates the spiritual and the heart centered learning and the mindset with the practical advice about things that you can do habits that you can integrate for your money that you know, step by step will absolutely be life changing, and she can do both of those things with you and partner to do those things together. So I can imagine those one-on-one -on -one experiences have both of those intertwined. She wouldn't leave you wanting anything, <laughs> anything more than that. Um, and I, I'm so excited to be learning more about what you're doing and partnering with you. And um, thanks so much for coming and talking to us today on such an important topic. I think. Well, thank you. Thank you. Because any way that I can spread the word, spread the gospel, like, let's do this because it could be a really changed world, the more and more people that create healing in their relationship with money. So if anyone listening would love to just do a free discovery call and just see, you know, if it's a good fit to even be working together, go to my website, you can schedule a, 
a free uh, discovery call, a complimentary discovery call, and, and we can see where it can kind of take from there. That's a great offer. I will have all of her contact information um, on the bottom in the comments. You'll be able to find it really easily. And I'm going to be tagging her on, on Instagram and putting her information all over Facebook. So whatever platform you're listening here, I know you'll be able to get in touch with her and see what her programs are and hopefully pick up her book, Make Money Your Partner. Thanks again so much, Beth. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.